we do thank God. Now, again to all of you that's here on today, if you have your Bibles, we pray you turn with us uh, to our text on today. For you that's here for the first time, we read uh, together. Uh, and if you don't mind, you can read along with us. We'll read from the King James. We'll use different uh, uh, versions during our uh, translations uh, during our presentation, but uh, uh, for the reading we use from the King James. Uh, John 6 chapter verses 24 through 30. When you're found it, if you say amen. amen. Uh, let us uh, read it together beginning at that 24th verse. It said, when uh, the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, You seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perishes, but for that which endured for unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him had God the Father sealed. Then they said unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. They said therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then, that we may see and believe thee? What does thou work? Thank you so much for the hearing and reading of God's holy word. And on today we want to look at this from the thought of, uh, I think it's on your program, I left out one of the essays, but on the program we should be deserved. Uh, it said, tell your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. don't just don't get, get dessert. You need the full meal. I know it said get the full meal, but tell them not, not only do you need to get it, say you need it. The full meal. Tell your neighbor, don't just get dessert. You need the full meal. Thank you so much again to all of you that gathered here on today. You need the full meal. Most of the time, when we have the opportunity or the privilege or however you want to put it, that we visit a restaurant, I guess that's normal now. Uh, one of the first things that we usually receive from our server, waiter, however you want to call it, a waitress, is uh, they tell you uh, they're glad to see you because they usually, I tell my wife, they want a nice tip. But usually the next thing they will do, they will usually give you a menu. And usually on that menu, it's has different categories or it's broken down into different areas and uh, besides the wine and the liquor list, because I usually don't look at that, I know I'm not drinking it, I get I go to acting funny, y'all see me walking down the street acting crazy, it's what happened to Ray. He didn't have that Holy Spirit that I'm seeing on Sunday. He got another a spirit he just got filled with. But usually on our menu, we usually find an area that appetizer. And another one said, uh, somebody lost their reason, they keep putting all these things up here. And uh, you usually have an area that said appetizer, another area said, uh, it said the main course, and then there is one that some of your eyes go to first. And it said that uh, the dessert area. Uh, and, and you do not, most of us, usually, don't order all the time, or don't order from all three categories every time we visit a restaurant. But there's usually one area that we will order from, and that is, we will usually order the main course. 
For if we don't uh, eat from the main course most of the time, we don't, our appetite will not be satisfied. Now, if it was left up to our children, not all of them, but some of the children, uh, they would only eat dessert or junk food. But our parents understood that eating only desserts would cause health issues, cause bad teeth, and uh, cause you to not rest at night, and cause you to not grow up and be healthy. And so I said, well, what's so important about not eating the dessert first? And why can't we eat the dessert first? And so I'm looking at an article that said if we eat our desserts first, it would like fool our bodies into thinking it was getting all, y'all know this, that it needed. Uh, and, uh, now it would satisfy our sweet tooth, but it went on, the article went on to say, but there is danger in eating dessert first, because he said there are usually more empty calories and sugars in desserts and it only leads to weight problems and unhealthy condition. And sadly, many of us, as we look around, and we don't have to point at anyone, but sadly, many of us, and I've done pretty decent here lately, but many of us suffer now from health condition only because we don't eat. Here you say, you don't have to be fooling ourselves. Is that, uh, and the reason we stay where we are because we don't acknowledge that we are there, not because God allowed those things to happen to us, is because he gave us an opportunity and, you know, some things he has a, uh, uh, a will, a permissive will, and he gives us a permissive will to eat like we want to. Yeah. And when we don't eat healthy and our bodies suffer, it's not his fault. And so many of us are aware of uh, we are with our, some of our health conditions because of what we have done to our cell. But this thing about this dessert, desserts, 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 desserts may satisfy your sweet tooth, but desserts alone will not give you the nutrition that your body needs to have a healthy body. And I know some of you say, well, Rev, what in the world does it have to do with our, our message on today talking about don't order desserts only, but make sure you get the full meal. Well, if we look at the miracles, that's the seven miracles that found in the Gospel of John, uh, we looked at uh, what John said and why he recorded these six, seven miracles, and it is seven, in the book of John that were given to him by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He told us why. John, the 20th chapter, verse 31, and we looked at that briefly a few weeks ago when we talked about uh, these signs can give us eternal life. But John said in John 20 and 31 in his book, it said, but, talking about the sign, these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ. Tell your neighbor that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believe it, you might have life through his name. Well, I still haven't said much about uh, this deserved and full meal. Uh, but, but, but probably before we finish, we can kind of tie into this dessert and this needing a full meal. But Jesus did miracles or signs for a purpose. But Jesus said that some were seeking signs or miracles only for physical or temporal benefits. And these temporal or physical benefits was not, a, not satisfying their spiritual harm. Some, it could be some of us, and he said it could be said that they wanted dessert and not the full dinner. I must say again, signs and miracles are important. For John said they were given that we might what? Y'all got to wait. We just talked about it. John said these signs and miracles, these wonders 
works of Jesus was given that we might what? Believe, Believe in what? In that Jesus Christ is the son of what? And he said, but when we only want emotions and what we can see and not God's complete word, tell your neighbor there is a problem. And that's what uh, Jesus really deals with in this text on the day because many wanted just to desert, just to kick, just the emotional high that they could get from what we might call a dessert. But tell your neighbor, desserts don't last. For after a little while, you're going to need some, some real food. And, and so if we look at our text on today, it talks about a large crowd. And, and many of them wanted only dessert and not the full meal. Uh, they believed, uh, uh, they, did not, they did not want to receive or accept the word of God. They wanted to only witness another miracle and not receive the true word of God. Tell your neighbor, this group was a group that had witnessed or taken part in the feeding of the 5,000. Y'all heard of that miracle, have you? How many of y'all heard of that miracle? Uh, yeah, the miracle of feeding of the 5,000. Matter of fact, this is the only miracle that is recorded in all four of the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and uh, John. This group, this group, had not only witnessed the feeding of the 5,000 men plus the women and the children, they had witnessed Jesus do many other miracles. And this caused many to seek after Jesus. And tell your neighbor, when we hear about the good news of Jesus, it ought also make us want to seek after Jesus. But they were seeking after Jesus only for dessert and not for the full meal, meal that Jesus had to offer. And for a few moments, uh, I want to take a brief look at this crowd. For uh, sadly, some of us might be, might be put where we could be categorized in this crowd. That we don't want to seek Jesus for really who he is, but we only want to seek Jesus for a dessert. And that's a sad thing. Hey, neighbor, first of all, Tell your neighbor this group was excited about Jesus. And you know what? When every time when you think about Jesus, you ought to get excited. Have you done anything in your life that calls you to get excited? Let me leave that crowd over that crowd over that kind of quiet. Has Jesus done anything in your life that has caused you or is causing you to be excited about him? Well, well, let me ask this crowd. Y'all get quiet. Who woke you up? Yeah, wait a minute. That's quiet. Who woke you up this, this morning? Who, uh, who started you on you? Who put food on you? That, that'll make you a little bit excited about, about Jesus. And because it was Jesus who did that and not, not man. So when you think about Jesus, you ought to get excited. And it said this, this crowd... This crowd was excited about Jesus. And because they was excited, they, why were they was excited? They were excited because of the miracles they had witnessed, caused that witness Jesus do, caused them to be excited. And because they was excited, it said they followed physically Jesus. I said, that's pretty good. Well, well, that's pretty good because they physically followed Jesus. Notice I did not say they believed. Y'all didn't catch it. They physically followed Jesus, but they did not believe. John said, let's go back and look at it right quick. You don't have to turn over it. It said, John said the miracles are written that you might believe, not physically follow, but that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. They follow, but they didn't believe. How do I know? Because the text tells them, tell your neighbor they wanted dessert, but they did not want the full meal. John 6, the first two verses of this sixth chapter says, y'all got your eyes on it? 
If you're here for the first time, don't blow your mouth and say, I made a mistake, but if you follow with me, you can help me preach it better than me. <laughs> Notice it, it said they followed. Look at the first verse. It said, after these things, Jesus went over, is that it? Uh -huh. The Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a what? Great. Say a lot of folks. Followed him. Because they saw his miracle, which he did on them that were. Now, now they didn't just follow him. They got in a hurry. In, in other words, they were running to see Jesus. Now, now y'all say that, that? That's not true. Mark, the sixth chapter. Remember I said all, all four gospels give an account of this feeling. Mark the 6th chapter, verse 33 says, And the people saw them departing, that was Jesus along with his disciples, and many knew him, talking about Jesus, and ran afoot thither out of all cities, and out went them and came together unto him. This tells me it was a large crowd for we find out why it was a large crowd in verse 4. For verse 4 said it was Passover season, and this was a time when thousands of pilgrims flooded Jerusalem and the surrounding suburbs. And what they saw caused them to put forth an effort, not just casually walking, to see Jesus. And that kind of strange in how we will come to church. <laughs> You go in the I don't know. <laughs> it looks like it might rain just a little bit. And then when we show up, and everyone does not have to show the same excitement, you might not run around the church, but every now and again, you ought to just at least wave your hand. And, you know, when I'm watching TV, and I get my wife come in, and I'm watching one of these basketball games, and she come in. Right about the time it's shown up, I said good. good right. And they want to know, what, what are we on? Can <laughs> 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 you see what's on TV? <laughs> It said they were excited because it said that notice the Sea of Galilee was about 13 miles long and about 8 miles wide and, and some of the scholars said that where they left from to where they ended up to go around the Sea of Galilee was 9 miles but 9 to 12 miles because they, were, they didn't have to go around the whole sea but it said that Jesus him traveled 11 miles across the water but it said that them rascals outran the boat. That's what it said in verse 33. And they beat Jesus on the other side. Do y'all believe any great thing happened when you show up? Well, you ought to be in a hurry to get in church. So tell your neighbor, uh, uh, my actions really tell the story. Maybe you don't think nothing's going to happen until you get here. Y'all ain't caught that one yet. But I need to let you know Jesus is already here. And so if you don't come, he's already here. And when Jesus went across, they rushed around the lake and so that they could make sure that they could meet Jesus there because they were excited about Jesus. But they were excited for the wrong reason. Are you excited? Are you excited? Are you excited? Are you excited? Tell God thank you, Jesus. You ought to tell God, thank you. And you ought not worry about who here. You ought to come work ready to tell God, thank you for what he's done. Has he done anything for you? You know, when I was out on that, uh, when, I, when I fell in the Mississippi River, uh, back in around 79, you, you know what? I didn't call on the crowd. I didn't wait for the crowd to get there. I called on him yeah. while I was sitting on the gas can, waiting for her lock and to make it back. And if God had done anything for you, you ought not wait till the crowd show up. You ought to tell God. You ought to tell him thank you. And I can understand now when they say he'll make you run. When ain't nobody behind, he'll make you shout. Because God couldn't get excited about all that God had done. Tell your neighbor they were excited. But then the next thing is that it, it, 
if you're excited and follow Jesus, tell your neighbor you'll get more than you expected. Say something to tell your neighbor, you, if you follow Jesus, if you follow him, you'll get more than you expect. Well, I know you say, well, I don't believe that. Well, let me, let's look at our text. It's in the text. Let's, let's look at it. It, it. it said that, now remember, they came only for dessert. That's what I see. That's what Jesus see. You're going to catch it in a minute. And, and, and most of them, the reason I say they came only for dessert because they only came to see another miracle. Or they came to uh, what they could receive for themselves. But look at what we learned from Luke, the ninth chapter, verse 11. I'll write it down. Uh, and uh, maybe one day we'll have it where you don't have to, you can, you can just see it. And verse 11 said, and the people, when they knew it, knew what? When they knew that Jesus had left one side and gone to the other side, they followed him and received them, and he received them, and spake unto them of the kingdom of God, and he of them that need, had need of him. Remember, they followed Jesus not because they wanted to be, uh, they wanted to hear about the kingdom of God. They followed him because they were excited about seeing the miracle that, the miracles that he had already performed. Now, if they had truly understood who he was, they would have been coming for the full meal, but they did not. Because they followed him just physically. And tell your neighbor, they got more than they bargained for, for Jesus sat down and he taught them. And not only did he teach them, tell your neighbor, he healed all of them that was in need. If y'all ain't called it. See, I'm trying to tell you, if you get around Jesus, if you come in the presence of Jesus, well, how do you come in the presence of Jesus? You gotta give him some time. And if you meditate and call on God's holy name, he might not give you everything that you want, but I'm going to tell you that he will give you everything that you need. Some say, well, if he give me everything that I need, why don't he always heal what we call? Sometimes he says that I'll give you what you need. And all the time, it's not healing that you need. Not physical healing, because one glad morning, we're going to leave this place. And he said, but you need to make sure that you have been made whole on the inside. And that you are ready when this old life on this side cannot afford your home anymore. And so they all got to teach it. Of Jesus. Yes. Some was healed that needed healing. Yes, but tell your neighbor, we find in our text or in the different uh, scriptures uh, that talks about this feeding of the 5,000 that they had a long day. Uh, and, and you know, just think about running around. How many of you are able to run? Some of them probably wasn't young. They ran around the sea. Yeah. So now they sit down and Jesus teaches them for a long time. Right. And what do you, you what we what do we usually do after a long day? Before we take a nap, I want to. Yeah. 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 And the scripture says they were tired and hungry. And the disciples said, send them away. But Jesus said, shut them down. Yeah. And so they were able to get something that all of them, all of them might have not needed physical healing, but they were all hungry. And tell your neighbor, Jesus is opening up a buffet in the middle of the desert. Yeah. Yeah. Any of y'all been to buffets? Yeah. Anybody over here not ashamed to say they've been to the buffet? Yeah. How many of y'all been to a buffet? Yeah. What about this side over here? And one of the things we hate about buffets, or you laugh about buffets, you eat? Oh, y'all know that too. That's why I try to stay away from them now. Because we eat much as we want. We usually be overfilled. And tell your neighbor, Jesus opened up not just a diner, but he opened up a buffet in the middle of a desert. Now, the buffet didn't have a lot of things on it, but it had all they needed. All they wanted, it had two fish. Well, let me, re let me restart that. It started out with two fish and five little loaves of bread, but that buffet never ran out. 
The remedy is that they had so much on the buffet that when everybody finished eating, right. tell your neighbor, he taught us another lesson that we don't want to follow. He said, don't leave all of the, the leftovers laying down. Pick the leftovers up. But you know, we done got so, uh, I, I guess so beside ourselves now, we just throw away more than we eat something. Right. But he said, but they witnessed this. They, they, in other words, they got more than they were looking for. They was taught about the kingdom of God, and they witnessed more miracles of healing and the miracle of the feeding of 5,000 that they all that took part in. I tell your neighbor, yes. what a day. What, a day. what an experience. Yes. But tell your neighbor, many were still spiritually hungry. Uh, yes. uh, they were excited about what had happened, so excited about Jesus satisfying their sweet tooth that they wanted to make Jesus their earthly king. But they forgot really the main purpose. The main purpose was not to make him an earthly king, but to become his child. So he could take him back home to his heavenly king, his heavenly uh, paradise. Let's read, skip down to verse 14 of that sixth chapter of John. L listen at what happened. He says that after the people saw the miraculous, I'm reading from the NIV, signs, that Jesus did, they began to say, surely this is the prophet who has come into the world. They were looking for him. Verse 15 said, Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by faith, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. And while he was in the mountain, they noticed that Jesus sent his disciples across the Sea of Galilee to back to Capernaum. But Jesus met them later after a prayer meeting that he had in the mountain. He met them, and he met them in the middle of the night, come walking on the water. Anybody heard of that? No man can walk on the water, but Jesus met the disciples as he sent them back across the Sea of Galilee, and he met them on the sea in the middle of the sea, coming to them walking by night on the water. And the next day when the crowd realized that Jesus was gone, they came looking for him. And I thought that was ironic, and I thought I need to let you know that if Jesus really has excited you or has caused you to become excited about him, nobody have to tell you. You'll go looking for him yourself. How do you find him? You find him when you go down on your knees. You find him when you come to church. You find him when you go to Bible study. You find him in your moments when you are meditating. You and the, if he's done anything for you, if you're excited, well, I need to rephrase it. I know he's done something for you. If you're excited about him, nobody have to tell you. And, and when they found him, Jesus asked him a rousing question. He really said that you come only for dessert. Let, let's look at this. And so this is my question to you on today. Why are you here? Did you only come for dessert? Remember, dessert seems to come after the main course. Remember, dessert only satisfies part of our desires. It, it, it does not give us totally what we need. But listen at what Jesus said to them. Y'all got your eyes on verse 26? Jesus answered them, I said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, you seek me not because you saw the miracles. That's kind of confusing because he said they came across. They ran around the lake to see a Galilee because the miracles that they had witnessed. But he said, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. I said, well, Jesus, that's kind of contradicting because Eating of the loaves for the miracle. He said, you hadn't caught the whole thing. The miracles was there to prove that I was the Christ. They didn't come looking for a miracle that proved that I'm the Christ. They came looking for a physical desire to be happy. They only wanted dessert. They did not want the full meal. The full meal told them the miracle that they had witnessed should have identified me as being Christ the Savior. Well, well. Not an earthly king where you only go buy ice cream, where you only go buy, you know, some of these little places that you buy, the spoons or whatever, but he said, come into me 
you could have received the full meal. Listen at what the New Living Translation, how it reads, verse 26, and maybe you'll understand it a little bit better. Uh, verse 26 from the New Living Translation is that Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. You want to be with me because I fed you. See, so still keep going back to that feeding. Not because you understood the miraculous sign. In other words, they were coming looking for another feeding. In other words, how many of you know when you get dessert, it only going to last for a little while? And you're going to need a full course. Jesus said unto them, verily, verily. In other words, he said, you only want dessert. And Jesus was saying, the eating of the loaves, yes, it was a miracle, but it was like dessert. He came after his teaching about the kingdom of God and the healing of others. And yes, it was a miracle, but they did not understand to understand the miracles was to prove that Jesus was the Christ. But all they came now found after they found Jesus was they wanted some fish again. Yeah. And that's all that some of you want to make your to be emotionally to feel good. It's nothing wrong to run around and shout, but if you don't have God on the inside, when you finish your shout you still no won't be able to handle the problems in your life. I'm going to say this again. Because if you don't eat the full meal and you only eat dessert when you run one block, you're still home. You still don't have the energy to do the thing. And so Christ said, I taught them about the kingdom of God. But all that they wanted was a emotional feeling. They did not want to be filled by the Holy Ghost. They did not want to be filled by the bread of life. And Jesus did say later he was the bread of life. They forgot about the teaching about the kingdom that he did. They were only there for a materialistic gain. Why are you here on today? If God does not give you what you ask for, will you show up next Sunday? If he does not give you the job, will you show up? Or will you tell the folks, I don't know about that God anymore. If he doesn't work it out the way you think he should, well, that's what he said they came for. And, and so ask yourself, why are you here today? Did you come only for the dessert of what Jesus can do for you materialistically in your life? Not what he can do for you spiritually. And sadly, some of you are like the crowd that Jesus addressed. And this is why we go away sad and we call everybody and talk about everybody else but what God can do for them because of what he had done for us. But Jesus said to them and his message to them in verse 27 and the message to us and look at verse 27 quickly and then I'm going to get ready to let you go. But Jesus said in verse 27 from the New Living Translation, but don't be so concerned about perishable things like food. I read from the New Living Translation, tell your neighbor, don't be so concerned about the dessert. In other words, make sure that you get the main course. He said, spend your energy seeking uh, the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. For God the Father has given me the seal of improvement. In other words, Jesus said to them, and he's also saying to us, don't just go come looking for a sign or a miracle or just dessert. Because remember, they did not quite understand what Jesus still was talking about because after he told them that in verse 27, they came back and then said unto him, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? They still hadn't caught it in that you got to first before you can work, you got to get high. And we know, and we've been talking about high. You got to first, he said in verse 29, you got to believe. And then they said, well, still they didn't get it because they were still won't dessert. And they said in verse 30, 30, they said that, show us a sign. Right. God said, I already showed you a sign. And you still talking about what can I do to work. In other words, if you don't believe on me, if you do not accept him, that's what he was saying, as your personal savior, you will not be able to enter into the kingdom of God. So he asked you, what can I do? So what can I do? For your personal gain. He said that if you trust me, you can get the personal gain, but you'll get much more than just your personal gain. So Jesus said, don't just get a feeling, get truly filled by the word of God. 
accept Jesus, not only for what he can do temporarily or a temporal gain, but accept him on today for eternal life. Don't just get dessert. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to get the full meal. Accept Jesus as your personal Savior, and if you accept him, that's getting the full meal. You will get eternal life. The one who died, I don't care. The one who was put in a barbary grave, but rose on the third day morning with all power. Tell your neighbor, that's what I want. I don't want just what I can see, because when you're what we can see, and uh, a lot of times that emotion wear off. But if we truly accept him, what's on the inside? It will be said that uh, wells of living water will flow. But when you get the full meal from Jesus, tell your neighbor you get eternal life over in glory. When you get the full meal from Jesus, you get one who said, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. When you get the full meal from Jesus, you get one who will walk with you. He'll talk with you. He'll tell you he, you're his own. He'll be with you as you pilgrim through this lifelong journey. Don't just get to desert. Get Jesus. Get all that he can do for you. The old folks used to say it like this. When I got Jesus, I got all that I, that I need. I come to tell you, don't just settle for a dessert. Don't just settle for an emotional high. Because when the emotional high wears off, it's just like the drug that's gone. You come looking for another high. But you're never satisfied. But when you truly get the full meal, when you truly accept him as your personal savior, when you truly take of that life bread, and reason Jesus said he knew that they really did not want the true bread of life, because when he offered them the true meal, it said many of them departed, because all they wanted was another ice cream cone. When he offered them a steak, they turned away. When he offered them broiled fish, when he really offered them himself, the true bread of life, they turned away, because all they wanted was dessert. So I ask you today, what are you here for? Are you here just to shout for a little while? And some of you won't even do that. Some of you won't even raise your hand. Show up on shout. Are you here to tell God thank you for what he's done for you? If you're really excited about what God has done and is doing in your life, when you look back over your life and you think things over, when you realize that it was by God's grace and God's mercy that you are living this moment, somebody will get excited about you. When you look about that and think about where he brought you from, when you look back over your life and you understand that many of our, our grandparents and many of our parents did not have what we got now, but it was only because of the prayer of the righteous that we are where we are.